Welcome back to State of the Nation, an audit of 33 government agencies has revealed 450 billion now outstanding and recoverables as operating surpluses. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshu, announced the agencies from which the monies are due, adding that each agency is expected to present a proposal of its repayment plan to the government. She said that the government understands that these monies might have been spent, but the money has to be paid back to the government coffers. Let's take a listen. So far, we have identified 450 billion as outstanding and recoverable as operating surpluses from various government agencies. And the agencies from which these monies are due include Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigeria Shippers Council, Nigeria Export Promotion Council, National Health Insurance Scheme, Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, Nigeria Communications Commission, Nigeria Postal Service, Nigeria National Information Technology and Development Agency, NITDA, Nigeria Television Authority, Bureau for Public Enterprises, National Pensions Commission, Nigeria Bulk Electricity Trading, Raw Materials Research and Development Council, Nigeria Ports, Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority, NEPSA, Federal Radio Corporation and Council for the Regulation of Engineering. We said come with your payment proposals. We know that in some cases that money may already have been spent. So they will now give us a proposal of how they're going to um, repay. But the money has to be paid. Um, I think it's very clear. Where audit reports have indicted some of the officers, some of these audit reports are going to the EFCC. It is, uh, you know, some of the um, audit findings are so serious that a decision was taken that those particular uh, reports must go to the FCC. You remember that as job in the Ministry of Finance, we're not a prosecuting agency. Ours is really to investigate and then we hand it over to the relevant agency. So some, all the audit reports have been sent to the parent ministry so they can take appropriate action. And where there's breach of procedure, the audit report clearly states which procedure has been breached. So there is um, internal disciplinary procedures that I think will follow in some case. But in some cases, the reports have actually been referred um, to the investigative agencies. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshu. Now the CEO of Financial Derivatives joins me on State of the Nation via Skype. I want to thank you so much indeed for talking to us at this time. 450 billion Naira discovered in 33 agencies. Tell us, is this the TSA at work? No. Uh, this is just the beginning of what we call fiscal discipline as part of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. When you look at 450 billion naira, you have to look at it from three dimensions. One, the Nigerian government is borrowing and is using about 34% of its non-discretionary revenue to service debt. What is the interest expense of, of 450 billion? The interest expense of 450 billion is about 800 million naira today, which is significant. The Nigerian government cannot afford that. The debt burden is already too high. Secondly, 450 billion naira is 30 billion naira. In fact, 40 billion naira higher than what the federal government and all the states shared in the FAC allocation, which was shared only about a week ago. So this amount is equivalent to stabbing the entire federation of its revenue for one month today. Thirdly, the fact that there's going to be some indictment means that the Nigerian government is going to send signals to accounting officers and uh, ministries, development agencies and departments that to behave yourself properly is expected of you. And then if you behave yourself in a deviant manner, you'll be tried and be brought to book. So that is the question. And so it's, it sends a very clear signal. At the time the Nigerian government is going out to borrow money, at the time the Nigerian government is trying to put its house in order, at the time the Nigerian government is cutting back on waste and leakages, this kind of behavior cannot be tolerated. Now, uh, the, the minister herself categorically mentioned the word surplus. How then do you clearly delineate what surpluses means in this case, knowing that the agencies have to be self-sustainable. The Nigerian Television Authority, for example, and the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, they have to make that extra money. No, surplus is your definition. In a public agency, is a definition of profit. 
what happens when there's a profit in a company is that the shareholders meet and decide how much they're going to retain and how much they're going to pay out as dividend. The owner of this organization is the federal government of Nigeria, and there's a law that says that 85% of all the surpluses, I think, has to be repatriated to the owner, to the supervising ministry. And this reduces the expense which the federal government of Nigeria has to use to sustain this, uh, these particular agencies. These are agencies that raise revenue from the government. They pay the money through the TSA and bring it back. But what you see is that if you look at the, the returns I have seen, the total expenditure of, a, of an agency is equal to its total revenue. In most cases, it is embarrassing. The total expenditure equals total revenue, and you have a surplus of zero. That is not creative accounting. In fact, that is mental lethargy. Oh, okay, now, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's an interesting one, but we'll have to talk about that in some other uh, forum or another time on the show. Now, the government's war on corruption and uh, its determination to block these loopholes that we've seen in the system comes to bear in this situation. Is this backtracking internal corruption and stealing perpetrated by the agencies? No, I think there's corruption, there's inefficiency, there's uh, teaming and leading, there are all sorts of things. But once you start to focus and audit the activities, you'll find that this kind of behavior becomes minimal. So typically in, in, any, in any society, 90 to 95% of people behave themselves, 5% are deviants, and they can be picked out. But in this country, what has happened is that corruption, inefficiency, and ineffectiveness has become pervasive, and that has become the So this is sending a signal when they say change starts from here and there. It's, the signaling is important, but are you going to solve the Nigerian problem by this? No, there's much more to be done. The Nigerian economic problems are much more deeper than we see, but these signals help to show that the, con the country and the government is serious. You, you know, a, 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 colleague, a colleague of mine was just asking me before I came on the show that first the government went after the lawmakers, then the judiciary. Now the government agencies uh, is forced to ask who is next. Is the banks up next? No, the banks have their, their shareholders. The banks are regulated. The banks are supervised. You have the NDIC, you have the central bank, you have the stabilizing institution, AMCOM. So I think the banking system itself has its own, you know, uh, is able to take care of itself and there are agencies in charge of, of dealing with them. And if a bank soundness is questioned, you know what will happen. The, uh, the, the, uh, there will be intervention by the central bank or whatever regulatory agency to actually protect shareholders. I don't think so. And this is not a, this is not a witch hunt. And this is just a question of cleaning house making sure that, you know, everything is done properly to send a signal. So by the time the private sector sees that the public sector is obeying the rules of corporate governance, then they will take a lead from that, and the entire society on a macro basis will do better. Don't forget that the president just issued an instruction that all MDs of agencies and parasitals should fly only by economy, which is a signal, maybe excessive, but I think it's something that is sending a, the right signal to the, to the private sector that we have to live within our means. <clears throat> Mr. Bismarck Rouhani, I want to thank you so much indeed for talking to us on State of the Nation, of course, the CEO of Financial Derivatives. Many thanks indeed for your time and your thoughts on the program and to you also for being part of the show. Many thanks indeed. Join me again same time next week for another fresh package. I'm Kimba Omar and bye for now.